Ladies and gentlemen, good morning uh, and welcome to the Prosperity UK 2017 conference. My name is Paul Marshall uh, and I'm here just to introduce the proceedings today. The genesis of uh, today's conference uh, was the view and observation of Jonathan Hill and I and, and many others uh, that we needed to have an opportunity for people at the coalface of business, academia, finance and trade to have a chance to get together to talk about the challenges and opportunities of Brexit. It's nearly one year since the Brexit vote and there is a very big contrast between uh, what we hear uh, in the world of politics uh, which is still very much in a, in a process of grieving and understandably so um, and working through the national psyche um, and the world of business where uh, all of us uh, in business or in academia are having to get on with the challenges of uh, how we deal with the, the changing uh, uh, situation. So you might call this the get on with it conference. Um, it, it's very important to say that this event is bringing together of leavers and remainers. We've been, we're completely agnostic uh, uh, in terms of the speakers. I have no idea actually which of the speakers are leavers and which are remainers. Now it doesn't really matter anymore because there is a reality that all of us are facing in our business uh, lives and in, our practical, in the practical issues we have to deal with. And so uh, in that sense it's, it's, it's absolutely a coming together of leavers and remainers and that's symbolized by Lord, and Hill, Lord Hill and I uh, coming together as as, uh, uh, as organisers, because I can say I, I remember that I was a lever and he's a remainer, and and um, uh, and that and that is symbolic of, of today's venture. Um, I think going beyond what I, beyond that, the, the, the phrase that has most struck me in the last six months has been the phrase used by the Legatum Institute of unfrozen moment. We are at an unfrozen moment in our country's history. The kind of thing that only happens once or every one or two generations and there's a great opportunity to, to really think about forging a new um, uh, uh, future and particularly forging a new prosper in terms of the economy for our country and for our economy. Um, the, uh, I'd like to particularly thank today Shearman and Sterling for sponsoring this event. Uh, hopefully um, you will see their names. They, 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 their name they, it will flash up regularly on the, on the screen. It's not there at this moment but it, it, they are uh, actively involved in the whole day and Barney Reynolds is um, playing a very big part on their p behalf in, in, in curating uh, some of the events. I'd also like to make the point that uh, today is f falling under the rules of PERDA. Um, it is not a political event uh, and it is independent of uh, party politics and specifically non-partisan. Uh, there have been a couple of changes to the agenda because of the general election, uh, and you'll, you, I mean, the agenda is, be, is, be, is updated live all the time uh, on, your, on the screens and on your handset and in the, on, on, on the web, um, so you can access it. But Greg Clark, who was going to be speaking uh, this afternoon, has had to uh, withdraw, for, not actually not specifically for PERDA rules, but for grid rules, uh, electoral grid rules. Um, but, uh, but, but other than that, um, things are proceeding very much as planned. And I want to say a little bit about logistics now. Uh, and here I'm going to use the slides. Uh, first of all, we have brought together nearly 80 experts from locations all over the world to take part. Uh, particularly, uh, I would highlight the experts on trade, uh, which has been curated by the Legatum Institute. Uh, all through the day, uh, there are panels on trade. Uh, and that's because we trade is one of the most complex parts of this discussion. And uh, I think all of us, certainly me, I'm going to be going to quite a few of those sessions, can learn a lot about the intricacies of trade today. And, and so that's a big strand going through the day. Um, our, our appeal to all of you is to be as interactive as possible, to take part in the... They keep, could you, <laughs> the slides keep uh, moving ahead of what I was going to say. Um, the uh, uh, network amongst yourselves uh, and uh, use the hashtag Prosperity UK to inform each other uh, and to inform the world outside. All of the uh, panels are being streamed. 
uh, live on the uh, uh, Prosperity website. Uh, and we'll also be making a script of all the panels uh, afterwards, which we'll be submitting to both the select committee uh, and to government so that none of the words uh, here are wasted. Um, I'd now like to hand over to Lord Hill, my partner in crime, um, who uh, is going to introduce our guest speaker, our first keynote speaker. Um, it's been a great uh, pleasure for me to work with Jonathan Hill in the last three months. Uh, he is very well known to uh, most, if not all of you. He was the uh, EU's uh, Commissioner for Financial Services and Capital Markets Union. I would say he's one of the most respected Brits on the continent and uh, hopefully will have a significant part to play uh, in the next few years as we negotiate uh, a Brexit. So, Jonathan, over to you. Paul, thank you very much and uh, welcome to everyone to be here. We've got a fantastic programme and I think the response we've had from all of the speakers and from you coming here shows that the timing of this event is right and that the idea of bringing people together has struck a chord. Now we want to uh, crack on, but before I do, I just want to say a few words about what's brought us together today and what I hope we might be able to achieve in the course of it. As Paul said, he and I were on different sides of the referendum debate, but we realised afterwards that we agreed pretty much 100% on what we need to do now as Britain leaves the EU. We both felt that as a country we've got to move on from this madly polarised debate with politicians endlessly refighting the referendum by proxy. And in other words, instead of spending our time refighting the last war, we should be spending every minute we have in thinking about the future and working out how we can put our best foot forward given the referendum result. So I think we need to stop this wildly exaggerated language of liberation or catastrophe. It's not a liberation. If you use the word liberation in Europe, that has a very particular meaning for people who were liberated, nor, I believe, is it going to be a catastrophe. So what we need to do is be a bit more balanced, but recognise that there are going to be both problems and opportunities as we leave. And anyone who's ever been involved in politics knows that when you make policy changes, however small, there are winners and losers. And here, we're going to be making the biggest set of policy changes taken together probably since the war. So, of course, there are going to be winners and losers, and we should be honest about that. It isn't Ramona defeatism to suggest that there might be some disruption to existing markets, nor is it swivel-eyed utopianism to suggest that there can be opportunities from a new relationship with Europe. So to work out what's the smart thing to do, to work out how we minimise the downside and maximise the upside, you have to start with the analysis and you have to be able to have an honest debate. We also agreed, I think, that Brexit is a subset of a much bigger question about the kind of country, the kind of economy, the kind of society we want to be and we want to have. And to have that discussion, we need to lift our eyes from the narrow Brexit issue and not allow our future to be defined simply by that process of Brexit. And we also felt, Paul and I, that uh, we've got to find ways of bringing leavers and remainers together to start thinking constructively about the future and that the best way of doing that was to bring together the kind of people we have in this room today. Politicians might be endlessly refighting the referendum, but we knew that people in business, people who are running our universities, they don't have that luxury or that self-indulgence. They're having to take decisions every day about where to invest, where to locate, how to develop their business or institution. And for them, for you, the clock is ticking and the facts on the ground are changing every day. So in trying to move things on, this conference is obviously only just a start, but we think that it can help. 
It can show that people who voted differently, leave, remain, can come together and have a grown-up discussion. And if business and universities can do that, why can't our politicians? It can help us to challenge, uh, to identify some of the main challenges and opportunities we're going to have, and to do it, though, from a practical point of view. And to be honest, that isn't something that my old friends in uh, Whitehall or Westminster are necessarily very well placed to do. Why should they understand better than you the various uh, changes that might affect your business? Why should they understand better than you exactly how international collaboration in research works or what you need to do, for example, to make sure that the UK can continue to be a worldwide centre for excellence. And rather than sitting back and waiting for something to happen to you and then complaining about it afterwards, isn't it better for our manufacturers, for our services, for our universities, to be showing that they want to play their part in shaping our future and building a prosperous society. So I believe that a better informed and rational debate is also likely to lead to a more rational approach to the negotiations ahead, something again which is in all our interests, whichever way we voted in the referendum. So I hope that we can take this opportunity today to shape that process, to spark off some new ideas and help inform the government's thinking.